Welcome, everybody, to Any Strike, The Edge. I'm your host, Scott Holbrook, with me as always, uh, Mr. Entrepreneur Adam Paul Smolak. And today we've got a guest, very famous, a lot of you probably already know him. Uh, we've got Mr. John Hackleman, uh, the pit master. John, thanks for joining. How are you doing? Hey, good. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, so to get started, I, I, I've i never asked you before. I don't know why now. We've known each other for a while, but where where does Pitmaster come from? Like, how, how did this name get to you? How did it, how did it stick with you? Why, you know, why is um, that? You? Well, when I opened my first gym, which was in my backyard in LA, oh, wow. I just, I had just gotten out of the army and I moved to LA. Um, and then after a couple of years of working as a registered nurse, um, I was still fighting and I, I, but I was so busy, I didn't have time to go to the gym and train with the guys all the time. So to stay in shape, I built a little 400 square foot building gym in my backyard. And that was in Woodland Hills, California, um, 1985. And, um, and next thing I know, you know, I built it so I could train and stay in shape. And, and you know, if I couldn't make it to the gym because I was working, a, maybe I worked a double or something as a nurse. Right. And then next thing I know, like uh, people heard about it and people from my yeah. gym, for people uh, from uh, from work. And then I worked part time as a bouncer and like some of the other bouncers wanted to come train. Next thing you know, uh, I got a bunch of guys training there. And one of the guys go, ah, this is small. This is such a small gym. It's, it's like we're training in a pit. So that's where it got its name. And since uh, the gym was called the Pit, I became the Pit Master. Ah, uh, that's it. That makes a lot of sense. All right, very cool. And so you, you're not in the Pit anymore, I assume, or yeah. or did you just name a new gym the Pit? Yeah, anywhere I, anywhere we train is called the Pit. Like I have a Pit, we have a Pit in Aurora Grande, we have a Pit in uh, uh, San Luis Obispo, we got a Pit in Atascadero. There's a Pit in Arizona. Um, Actually, I think yeah. There's there's a pit in uh, I think it's near Mesa. Okay. Um, and uh, and then we got a pit and we got we have pits all over. Uh, the pit is just you know it's like a it's the name of our our brand. It's not so our, you got American our, Top Team. You got yeah you know, these guys okay. here. And you got you got the pit. Yeah, we're we're a lot different. We're a smaller, more we're more a martial arts gym. That happens to do fight, uh, uh, sport fighting on the side. American Top Team is a sport fighting gym, uh, so it's a little, it's kind of reversed. And and, and so from from the perspective of like, I guess mindset, you know, the show's all about mindset. Like, what what would you say then would be the difference between that first option and the second option, being a, a martial arts gym that happens to have sport fighters, you know, versus you know a, a top team where they're you know sport fighting first, um, and then martial arts kind of as a, as a tactic to that. Like, what's the the difference in you know the mindset, I guess, of the of the you know the teacher, the coach, as well as the you know the students. Um. I don't think there is much, to be honest. Uh, I treat my fight team like my students and vice versa. Um, in fact, my fight team has to get belts under me. Um, but the difference is the, the every time I train my fight team, I want them to become a UFC champion. When I fight, when I train my, 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 traditional martial arts side, I want them to uh, not get bullied if they're a kid, and if they're an adult, stay safe in the street and get home to your family. So the way I do both are almost identical. The training procedures are almost identical, um, but the end goal of the fight team is the UFC championship. The end goal of my traditional school is to stay safe on the street. And while doing that, they're both doing the same kind of workouts, the same, the same techniques. Um, you know, they have different attire. The, my, you know, my traditional school wears the gi with the belt and my fight team doesn't. But they're, they're pretty much doing the same workouts, the same uh, goals of, of, of each workout. 
the the only difference is the end the main difference is the end goal so like top team they have a traditional school inside of their fight team but probably 90 percent of their gym is dedicated their bandwidth is is all about fighters and then they have a little uh traditional jujitsu school on the side and then i'm the opposite where i have say say 200 you know close to 300 students and then i have a fight team of maybe 10. Mm. and theirs mm -hmm. is reversed there they reverse those numbers but it's the same pretty much you know we're in the, in the, at the end of the day, we're all martial artists. That, that's right. interesting because I think it helps your brand, the pit, as self-defense. Uh, you know, it's kind of legendary for a lot of gyms around the country uh, to kind of be cra Cracker Jack Studios. Um, whereas you uh, have a solid base in martial arts, but you're training fighters. So your students must have a lot of solace in your ability and they get to train and see UFC fighters so they can see it. It, it works on the street. And what you're They're teaching good. is pretty authentic. Yeah. That must be your brain. That's great. Yeah. And we call it, sen I call it sensei UFC <laughs> because I feel like the UFC like is teaching us martial artists what works and what does in the street. Because in the old days when our system, my system was originated, Kaju Kempo, it was made for the street, and the guys in Hawaii went out there and tried the techniques, and then they'd bring them back to the dojo and work on them. But they were, it started off as a system to basically beat up people on the street. Well, and so, so they like, tried the techniques, you mean they like went and got into bar fights or? Yeah, oh yeah, they're in Hawaii, yeah. This Kaju Kempo, they were, it was mainly white people because they don't like white people. So the locals in Hawaii started this system called Kaju Kempo, Karate, Judo, Jiu Jitsu, and Kempo, or boxing. And uh, they would go try their techniques out on the, the military, mainly military guys downtown. You know, so it's, they got their, you know, they got, that's where they tried their techniques. And to be honest, I'm not proud of this, but, uh, you know, that's where I tried a lot of my stuff out back home. I'm from Hawaii, um, and then when I when I became a bouncer, uh, a lot of the students, you know, were, were a lot of the bouncers were my students, and if they had to do something and they got into a little scrap, they they you know say, hey, that right hook led to a combination were great, you know, so it it has a proving grounds nowadays. Obviously, we can't do that. Uh, it's a whole different uh, arena. It's a whole different uh, atmosphere out there. So now the best we can show is, oh, that shit works. And look, at it. my guys will be watching a fight on the UFC. They go, hey, you just thought you just taught that technique this weekend or this week. That works great, you know. So we're not going to try it on the street anymore. It's a different, you know, everything's different now. So we we see our techniques working in the UFC, and almost everything is transferable. Eye gouges aren't. Eye pokes are. I mean, you can see eye pokes work in the UFC. They might not be legal. <laughs> they might not. They might not be legal, and my fighters will never do them. You know, to to for that. But you watch guys like John Jones. You see how effective they are because as soon as the guy gets tapped in the eyes, he's on the ground. Like you know, he's he can't. He stops. You can see. You can see groin shots. How le how effective they are. Right. Mm -hmm. So. Oh, Almost, you see how bites, how effective they are. You know, Mike Tyson. So we don't, every tech, and, and we do teach those techniques in our Hawaiian Kempo street system, but we, you can't do that in the case. But there's only like, there's like three or four techniques that don't transfer over. Right. So it's it's pretty damn, it's, a, it's pretty effective and it's pretty efe if efficient and it's a pretty good test. You know, so... That's one reason that, like, when my guys fight, like, especially when Chuck was, you know, Chuck was, uh, um, you know, his heyday. All my it's students, you know, for yeah. everyone that is curious. Yeah, he would. He would be. I mean, if he like missed a training session, he'd come back and train that night with my traditional class. And they were like, "Oh shit, we're sharing. We're sharing a bag with Chuck Liddell right now," you know. So, 
and they would get to see like Glover, you know, Glover, you know, he's fighting actually next month now. Um, oh, is he? Because he, well, he had a great fight his last out. Yeah, yeah. And, and, they, and they got to see my students, something I teach them, you know, all the time is conditioning. It's, it's, it's grappling, striking, and the conditioning. Those three things are our main, you know, uh, they're our, our main components of our system. And each one is as important as the other. And this one, um, along with the other, some other things, the main thing that this one showed was a lot of times at the end of the day, conditioning, the one with a better conditioning will win. Even if other things, if everything else is even, the guy with a better conditioning is going right. to win. All things being right. equal. Yeah, you never hear you never hear Joe Rogan say, wow, that guy's in too good a condition. He's not good. <laughs> so. And you not have heard him say, people. and you have heard Joe Rogan say, well, that guy's from the pit. He must be in top shape. So my students take pride in that. So even my traditional students, we start at three years old. You know, so even my traditional students, they know, you know, that I come from a gym with a great heritage, a great, great, uh, great history. And, and we've watched our, you know, guys like Joe Rogan say, hey, the pit's a great gym. So, you know, it, it gives them a lot of confidence in the, in the, in the techniques and, and, and the traditions and the and the philosophy and concepts that we're teaching, there's they, they know like, oh shit, this is kind of the real deal. So it does help yeah. you a lot. I do like the fact that you can teach. Uh, you know, I, I've studied martial arts for 35 years. I'm 41. I started young. My son Aton will begin soon. Uh, he's just about four. But to see traditional martial arts and learn it, and then be able to go in the same gym in the cage and see how it's applied is a wonderful cross uh, mutual benefit there. So I think that's, that's it quite. It is. Yeah. And we started that in 85 when I, when I okay. opened the first pit in 85, I just wanted to, I wanted to get away with all, you know, Kaji Kempo. I love Kaji Kempo, the philosophies. I still <laughs> keep them with me, but the katas forms, tayokas, uh, grab arts, uh, punch tricks. I took anything choreographed or, proprietary out and I put in stuff that was going to work and we've you know we've been evolving since 1985 but it's always been you know traditional a traditional school that taught non-traditional techniques and it's worked out great for us oh that's that's awesome so I I like where you, where you so you started at three years old which you know yeah the, you know, the younger the better you know I would say um and you're just talking back to to your early part of your conversation that's what he you know, said that's what he said. Well, I, I agree. I mean, the, younger, the younger the better. You don't joke. disagree. You went, you went starting at three. Um, Not that so young. Was starting, I guess from from mindset level, um, and you're you know you're huge in anti bullying. Um, you know, I'd like to know where that came from. Um, but but first, uh, how I guess when you get them so early, when when you get them, you know, from three years old, you are able to to, to really shape and mold, you know, that mindset. Um, yeah. How, how does that factor into, you know, these other things, you know, you, you know they're not going to get bullied. They're going to you know, have the confidence. Like, what is it that you use to, to instill those things um, in, in a child so that when they come up there, you know, at the top I mean, of the heat? Yeah, like, it's really great because, uh, you know, I started Chuck Young, but, you know, not, I mean, he was like 19 or 20. So it wasn't like, you know, a baby. But I, I have a four-year-old that I started at four years old. And he's 20, I think he's 22 now, 20, no, he's 24, he's 24. And he's, he's a kick, you know, he's an MMA guy and he's, he's like six and one right now. And he's like, it's just watching him, you know, since he was four, you know? So I have a guy that started six, he's 21 now, he's fighting. And they've been with me, you know, since they were little kids. And, and uh, so uh, the way I teach, the way I, uh, I try to do that, is um, without like a lot of traditional schools, they do like uh, they do like um, like chat mats and like mat chats or whatever, where they sit there and they try to like tell the kid, you know, you know, don't be bullied and always stand up and stand up for your friends and and uh, uh, if somebody hits you, you know, go. You know, I don't know, I don't know what they do, but I'm a little more like teach them through doing like. 
their competency will create their confidence. And then their confidence will create even more competency. So the more competent they are, right, then all of a sudden they're not scared of bullies. If they're like drilling in class, sparring in class, grappling in class, hitting the bag really hard, you know, seeing how hard they hit, now all of a sudden they got confidence. Nobody's going to bully the confident guy. So I don't have to like, I don't have to preach for them all the time, you know, tr- you know, be confident, be confident, act confident. The confidence is there already because they're hitting so yeah, hard and, of, of yeah, just just, and, and putting in the work. Yeah. And they, so the, the confidence that they, they get create equals confidence. And then nobody's going to pick on that guy, you know, so he's going to, and I do teach certain things like always hit first, you know, I teach to always hit first, even the little kids, you know, um, Never start a fight over words. Never fight a start a fight a, fight a start. Start a fight over anger. Never start a fight over a challenge. You know, never start a fight over ch- jealousy. But never ever let anyone take your lunch money. And that means don't let anyone. If you think they're about to hit you, you hit them first. If you think they're about to lay your their hands on you, you hit them first. And uh, when I say hit, it could be a takedown. A lot of my guys would rather take the guy down real hard. But I mean, strike first. And and my students learn that from an early age. And sometimes parents are like, shouldn't you like never start a fight, always end the fight? I go, yeah, yeah. But starting the fight means they're about to hit you. Fight's already started. If you wait till they hit you, you might be waking up six months later in a nursing home and your kid's going to have a tracheostomy for the rest of his life. So it's you a, don't let anyone hit them first. It's a fine balance. Yeah. Um, that was, I was interested today to ask you about fear because fear can get you killed yeah Uh, fear is i think a lot of the origin of bullying um but it's also for example in a fight to hit first that makes a lot of sense to me um you know to be reactive in situation is not the best solution so fear in that case fear of of not doing something or of doing something and getting in trouble. Fear yeah. getting in trouble. So when it comes to my own martial art experience, um, I think fear, uh, I was talking to UFC fighter Noad Lahat uh, about this, um, and Noad uh, was saying that he has never been fr- afraid in the cage. He, he has aggression. Um, he, likes to, he likes to fight. Never been afraid. And that's interesting because as a martial artist, I was afraid to get hit from the beginning. But I'm not afraid, for example, in entrepreneurship. So I got two questions for you. One, do you think those people who are not afraid to get hit from the beginning, are they naturally inclined to be the fighters? And two, do you think fear is the origin of bullying or to control fear is the, is the key to gaining control of yourself? Hmm. Well, number one, I don't think I, uh, I've never had fear. My fear, I didn't like fighting. I didn't like getting hit, but I had a lot of fights, but in the ring or, you know, wherever, but I liked, uh, I was never fearful of getting hit. I was fearful of not winning and looking bad for the fans and looking bad for like one of the, one fought one fight. I was like, I don't know. I, was, I knocked a bunch of people out. Then all of a sudden this, I fought this guy and, he dropped me with a body shot and they stopped the fight. And my, my aunt calls me from Indiana, like the next day. She, oh man, watch your fight. I thought you were supposed to be good. <laughs> what happened? It's like, so I mean, that kind of stuff was, I hated, uh, I was fearful of letting people down, you know, and, and I was fearful of my manhood being stripped by, you know, fighting. Right. But I was I was always nervous, you know. Okay. So I, you know, I don't think fe- I, th- I think it's more nerves than fear. Like that fighter, I mean, all of the guys get nervous, but I don't think they're fearful because I've never been fearful of anybody, um, you know, short of my instructor um, coming up. But I've never been fearful. But I do get nervous before every, you know, speaking engagement, fight, you know, anything. So I see what he's saying, but. Um, I think bullying is more insecurity. Mm. So, I mean, that's a, that's a cousin of fear. Right. But I would use the word more insecurity that they lacked, uh, you know, so they had to 
overcompensate is another, you know, big word for a bully. They overcompensate, you know, by, by being a bully, but I, I've never had fear um, of, of a fight, but I've been nervous before every single fight. For me, fear, uh, when I started to spar uh, initially, um, I was too afraid or, or too uh, focused on not getting hit. Um, and it was until I got hit, you know, the first couple of times of getting hit is when I realized it wasn't so bad. Yeah. Um, it affected my whole game, you know, the fear of something that I didn't know. And then once it happened, I was, I was able to deal with it. Not so bad and move forward. That kind of lesson is applied to me in a lot of areas. That's why I, I asked you about the idea of, of fear, but fear, that yeah. Yeah. Is there, I mean, the, but the word fear is closely related to insecurity and, right. and lack of confidence and, you know, so, I mean, nervousness. So, I mean, they're really, there's a fine line between the two. I just always related, like, like I don't see any of my fighters ever getting, some of my fighters don't even get nervous. Holy shit. Some guy, nowadays, I hated fighting. And I got nervous before every fight. I was like, ah, I'm going to kill him ah. in the dress room. I just, I always had to psych myself out because I wanted to be mean. My guys now, like, even Glover, he's, like, so relaxed in the dress room and, just so relaxed walking out to the cage. He's smiling. He's loving it. I just can't. You MMA fighters and, and kickboxers weren't even like that. It's like th this whole new breed of MMA guys, like like Glover and, and, and a lot of my MMA guys, they're like, how do you stay? So I don't ask them that, but I think, like, how the fuck do they stay so calm? I was like, I was psyching myself up. Even Chuck, you know, he's like, I was like, come on, we got to work on some stuff before the fight. We're in the dressing room. He goes, John, John, relax. I got this. I guess let me just relax for a little while. I was like, and I was like, ah. <laughs> so, I don't know. And the guys nowadays, it's a whole other breed of animal that's out in the cage now. It's like they're so different than boxers, kickboxers, any other sport. They really are different in their – even in the way they interact with each other, they love each other. They hug each other. They they right. talk good at, about each other. You know they don't they don't badmouth each other except you know some of them do for you know you know make make some extra money. But boxers always like you know stare downs and shit. And MMA is like it's 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 so different. I love MMA as as a sport. I just I just love just the way these guys are such great martial artists and they show respect and Bushido and I just I'm well, so that, proud of it. But what, what I was thinking, I mean, because you know, as you know, they all got bases in, in martial arts, right? And like like that's just one of the things that, you know, coming up in martial arts that, that you're taught, you know, respect for everyone, uh, and respect yeah. for yourself. Um and so when when you talk about you know, which is was completely different than, you know, perhaps coming from boxing. I don't teach you disrespect, but you're coming from different places, right? Like, you yeah. know, if, if you're coming up in boxing, you know, you're your inner city, you know, this is a way out. This is you know, you're there to fight or you're sent because you're already uh, maybe have, I don't say violent tendencies, but, you know, you like to be, you know, forward and fighting that kind of stuff. Whereas, you know, as, as a martial artist, you're, you're coming in with, you know, probably a different background. Um, and then secondly, different, you know, different goals. Like, like, you know, you don't start traditional martial arts necessarily become an MMA fighter, whereas right. you do step foot in a boxing ring in order to be a boxer. Right. And so I, th I think there's a difference in just it's how different. the mindset began. Yeah, yeah, but I think I think even more MMA guys started with wrestling. I think wrestling was their base. Yeah. And it seems like wrestling has more of a respect base than boxing does too. Um because it's, you know, it, it's in schools a lot too, though. I mean, because yeah. you can be wrestling in high school, middle school, throughout, you know, university and everything and you know there's obviously got to be, you know, respect you can't there's no media, <laughs> you know, I well, guess. No, but, no, but, but like, but like a boxing trainer is still a boxing trainer. It's just, they don't like, I think like the wrestlers show more respect to their coaches than the boxing guys do. I, and I'm not putting down the boxing guys. I had, you know, that was a big, big part of my career was I was boxing. Um, and I, you know, uh, it just seems like there's that coach. They've replaced sensei with coach. So I get I get treated when I go to the UFC. Everybody calls me coach, and 
you know, they'll bow to me and stuff. A lot of the UFC guys, um, but they use, they just replace sensei with coach, but there's still that, that same, you know, there's same, the same respect, uh, that the, you know, martial arts guys have. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just, uh, I just, I, I just, it makes me happy to see that. And, and I think it's rubbing off on boxing because boxers now interact differently. Like they, they talk good about each other after fights. You didn't used to hear praises for their opponents much. You, you didn't hear that much, you know? Yeah. I can't, you know, this, now it's like, man, he's so great. That was a great fight. Even boxing has seemed to evolve more sure. with the respect that people are showing each other. I know kickboxing has, and that yeah. makes me feel good. You know, you, you watch guys like, uh, you watch guys like, um, who am I thinking of? I'm thinking of uh, the guy that fought uh, uh, Pacquiao. He's, he's, uh, he's, um, he's doing a lot of the broadcasting now. Um, oh, what, the, the Mexican kid. Um, no, the little black kid. He's from, uh, he's from, he's from Palm Springs. And such a good uh oh Bradley. Said, Tim yeah. Bradley. Tim Bradley, yeah, yeah. Such Wonderful. a good uh yeah, he's such a good uh he has, he's such a good interviewer and he has such a good uh he's such a good uh announcer, yeah. um commentator. Like the MMA count commentators, they're out it's like they were made to do that. They're yeah. like professional commentators, like wow. Dan Hardy and you know the, those guys. Uh, DC, Car DC Paul is so Felder. good. Felder, wow, is unbelievable. Um, they're, they're amazing. They're yeah. amazing, and so is Tim Bradley. You know, yeah. he's, when he announces fights, it's like, but they're so respectful, and uh, I'm really happy that boxing because that used to bug me that everybody gave each other bad looks and shit. You know, it bothered me when I was fighting. Well, coach, you have to look at that leadership because. Yeah. When you were fighting, um, and I'm 41 and I was a kid, we had the Don King era, um, and there wasn't a lot of professional platform. Guys like Mike Tyson, um, we, could, we could go back and look at all those fighters. They weren't represented well. Um, yeah. you know, uh, but, but he had the best coach out of all of them with his, uh, you know, with his right. respect for his coach, right. you know, Custo Motto. He oh did. my God! He was like a he was like a god to the to his fighters. Yes, yes. Um, and and we didn't see that a lot going forward. Um, no, but he died he really, early. He really brought that respect level. I mean, from Gracie yeah. on down. And when you look at um the announcers, uh, as we were just talking, or even the fighters, the love that they have for their coaches, the love they have for their team. Yeah. Um, you know the the stories. Are, are quite interesting. The UFC, and I would even make an argument like Glory Kickboxing, which I'm happy, uh, I think went through bankruptcy, and now I hear they, I just saw today they're going to hold an event coming up. Um, I'm glad to hear that. But ultimately, when you see these martial arts develop in terms of just show and promotion yeah. and um, the announcers, I, I do think that they've elevated the game at such a level. And when you look at a guy like Dana White saying that he's going to take over boxing, it's not hard to believe that because the platform he's established, let's, let's take fighter pay and put it out there, you know, uh, let, put it to the side, but let's just look at promotion and platform What the UFC and what some of these other promotions have done. Even one championship is amazing. The, yeah. the focus on story, the focus on building champions, the type of champions that we've had that represent the, the different, you know, global, uh, you know, like, for Khabib and Dagestan, for us to understand more about Dagestan, or for us to have more respect for New Zealand. For a lot of Americans, for example, they don't see that. So these these folks, like Khabib, what an amazing uh, representative for the sport. Um, you know, I'm sure a lot of young people around the world look at him as an idol. And, and yeah. that's, that's good. What do you think about that? Yeah, look at, I mean, how many, I've never even heard of a boxer's father dying and him being treated like a god. I mean, that's the father of the, the community. So yeah, I, I think that's great. I, I yeah, I, I agree. I, I, uh, I've had my ups and downs with Dana White, but uh, I definitely think he's done a sensational, just an unbelievable job with uh, with the UFC and come bringing it back like he did when uh, 
nobody else was willing to do a sport and he he's just such a ballsy guy you know and i know he i knew he has a shit ton of money and uh it's easy to be ball it's easier to be ballsy when you have that much money but to be honest you know a lot of guys aren't you know and he sure as fuck is you know yeah so i i, I like the way he is just fucking out there and he'll just do it and you know, not. I wasn't always crazy about the way he treated his fighters. Not, yep. not nothing about the pay, just talking. Um, but I don't know, man. I, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of grown. He's kind of grown on me, and I just like, I love what he's done for our sport, and I've loved what he's done for martial arts, and I think he's his good far, far outweighs his bad. So what do you, what do you? Yeah, I agree. I just want to take the Scott. I want to take the conversation in one direction. I was interested. Uh, and asking coach, coach, your message on anti-bullying. We look yeah. at this, look at the country. I, today. I just kind of wanted to go. Oh, oh, you did. Yeah. Well, yeah. No, that was my next. I'm sitting. I'm just sitting here waiting. <laughs> like, I, I want to hear how you got into it. I want to know why. Why, why such the passion? Well, like. Well, but I I have a question for you, which is, coach, what you know in 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 a, in a day today when when everybody feels like their rights are being stepped on, you know, you see protests. You see, um, you've seen social conflict for years in this country. And a lot of people feel like they're being bullied. Um, and what, what would you say dealing with, you know, younger kids? How could older, you know, people who are supposed to be adults necessarily, and, uh, you know, they have a lot of feelings um, about being bullied. What would you say to them and how, 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 how could uh, they um, get on a path of being strong? How could your message apply to professionals in the world? I guess is my question, sir. Well, like uh, for um, lead by example, like uh, for instance, uh, we were told be told to close. I I don't think that was right. So we we haven't closed yet, and I've been through, you know, and we're we're in, we're like the only gym around. I think that's open, uh, martial arts gym, um, and there's that. Because we're gonna send that my students thank me for that, and they and I made the stand. You know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be bullied. I'm not gonna close. This is my business. I don't have to close. And so I show them. They've seen me fight. They've seen me. Um, they've seen things happen. You know, where I have to, you know, practice what I preach. You know, I did a gun thing when, uh, you know, when that we had a protest in town, which I thought was gonna turn into a, a riot because everybody thought it was going to be a lot bigger than it was. Um, so I had a gun, a gun, a guy with a gun on the roof just to make sure our community was safe. And he had a walkie talkie. Um, uh, I was on every single news station, every, uh, every radio station, every newspaper and 99% of it was terrible at first. You know, I'm the gun slinger who's this and that. And I was like, I was just like, hey, sorry, I'm protecting myself, my family, and my community. Bing, I'm sorry, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna change it. Sorry, not sorry. And now we're getting new students because of it. We're getting, I'm getting stopped on the street. You know, thanks for protecting our, ca our community. You know, so um, I think leading by example. And people know I'm still in pretty good shape at 60. You know, and uh, uh, they they've seen me. A lot of my students have seen my fights and. You know, I had to actually get into a little scrap not too long ago, and a lot of my students, you know, uh, hey, you know, saw that, and so I, I, I talk about don't be, don't be bullied, but I also show that I'm not going to be bullied. So it's, I mean, it's easy for everybody, like a, that karate guy, you know, oh, don't be bullied, you know, don't let anyone bully you, don't let anyone take your lunch money. Then they're like, they're like a little bitch themselves, you know, and they they get bullied. So. I think leading by example is is uh, it's probably the best way, and uh, it is hard for kids, you know. And and uh, I was bullied, uh, you know. And uh, um, if it wasn't for my martial arts instructor, you know, who's who was the reason that I changed, um, boom, like that. He was a really he was a mean guy. He was a tough guy. I loved him. Very caring. Very kind to me. But he was also spent over 25 years in prison his whole life. And I saw him do heinous things to people. Um, 
you know, back in Hawaii in the, you know, early seventies. And, uh, but I loved him and, it, you know, he molded me, it, he molded my toughness. If it wasn't for him, um, I would be wearing a floral house dress right now and I'd be <laughs> serving someone food, you know, um, I don't know. I'd be, I'd be a soft person. I think if it wasn't for my instructor. Uh, so I try to do that for my students and be that tough guy, but I want to show them. I have a, I also, you know, I love my instructor and, you know, but I have a, I have a straighter moral compass. So, you know, I got my moral compass from my dad. I got my toughness from my martial arts instructor. So I try to combine both of those things. You know, so I want to show them you never be a bully. You don't give out, you don't ever give up your lunch money, but give it up freely to anyone that needs it. So don't don't let anyone take your lunch money, but give it to anyone that needs it. You know, don't you know? So I try to teach these lessons, and I try to, you know, like some guy if a family you know is is, is poor, or somebody's poor, and they can't afford lessons. You know, they see that I'll go out of my way and I'll sponsor them. You know, or I'll you know you know, something like that. So people realize, you know, that, you know, it has to be the complete package, the kindness, the courtesy, the respect, but then fuck it. Don't let anyone take your lunch money and don't take any shit from anyone, you know? So we're going to draw that line right there. So we'll be the karate guy be, you know, respectful and shit like that. But the second, the fucking second that th someone's going to uh, you know, mis mis take our kindness for weakness. We're gonna show them quickly that they just made a big mistake. Well, and I, I teach that from from the three year olds on up. You know, age appropriate, of course. But that's my lesson, and that's my that's my message. And I think it's been I think it's been taught pretty well. You know, so it, you know it's a little harsher than most schools around, but but I think we have a very kind side very family oriented we call that ohana that means family in hawaiian and we are one big you know happy ohana but nobody's going to take our lunch money so i would i would be very proud for my son to call you coach and uh, yeah, to learn that philosophy so you that's a great thing coach much respect. thanks 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 yeah, nice um yeah, well, so I guess you really answered me. So, you know, the bullying comes from you yourself, you know, we're bullied a bit. Um, yeah. Well, I'm moving, from Hawaii. What? I'm from Hawaii, you know, and, right. and they what, who, do they, who do they hate in Hawaii? <laughs> <laughs> who do they hate? They hate white people, and I'm very white, you know. In fact, uh, in fact, um, when I was growing up, you know, I had very blonde hair, and um, so I got picked on for a while, and – I knew that it was going to get worse. I, I heard horror stories about once I hit junior high school, how it was going to be there. Because junior high, my my elementary school, I wasn't really a tough school, but my junior high school was. And I knew that once I hit junior high school, the shit was going to hit the fan. I knew that at like nine years old, you mm -hmm. know. So I found a martial arts school on my own. And I started catching the bus there. And um, by the time I hit junior high school, um, I wasn't I wasn't going to have it. And, and at that point, there was nobody going to take my lunch money. And my instructor made sure of that. And he didn't tell me, be confident. Yeah, you got to be confident. No, he just showed me by example, you know, that, you know, kick the shit out of people. And if you have to, don't take any shit from anyone. And like I said, his was a little overboard because he would kick the shit out of someone who beeped their horn horn at him because he didn't go as soon as the light turned green. I mean, he he was like <laughs> he's getting out the car. <laughs> oh, he, I no, this is a true story. He got out of the car, and I saw him beat the shit out of the driver. And then he got back in the car laughing and drove away. And I remember he at twelve years him. old, I was like twelve years old, thinking. Hmm, I don't think that's right. I just I never thought that was right. But 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 when we went to tournaments and stuff, the respect he got, and if we went to a, a place, you know, he was very highly respected because of his toughness. Hawaii, they they respect, they don't care about money, they don't care about brains, they care about toughness. And the respect that he got everywhere we went, I was like, I always looked up to him and thought, 
well, I want to be respected like that, you know? So I got, I got, I, I went overboard and I started getting, you know, a lot tougher. So it became, you know, I became the fighter guy in, in junior high school. Somebody looked at me wrong. You know, somebody tried to, you know, tried to bully me. I, I would be the first to just start going. And um, that got me a big reputation real quick. The Howley that fought, you know, that's what they call white people. And, uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't pick on anyone. I didn't bully anyone. But any fucking, any guy that tried to be a bully was, I would, you know, I would just take him out. And uh, by the time I was, a, by the time I hit high school, I was already fighting in the Golden Gloves. And so my re reputation, you know, became that, you know, the, that, that tough howly, you know. So um, it, was, it, it would, did me well, you know. I was respected by the, even by the teachers, you know, I'd be like, I'd get, I'd be getting an F. I wouldn't even go to class and then I'd, I'd get a C or a B. And it was like, because they knew they respected the fact that I was the fighter. And um, it, it's, it's kind of a weird, uh, um, it, it's kind of a, a different culture, and, but it's a tough culture. And, and uh, so, like I said, I never bullied anyone, but my toughness got me, through even when I joined the army, you know, basic training, you know, the drill sergeants would be like, you know, hey, Hackleman, they would, you know, they'd be yelling at everybody else, you fuck it, you fuck it, this, hey, and they go, hey, how you doing, John? You know, it's like, so that I realized young that the toughness was going to get me places, you know, right. But then, you know, I started having kids young too. So I realized I, I needed more than that. And fighting didn't pay much. I wasn't, right. I wasn't a great pro fighter, you know. So I went to college and, you know, got that too. So the brains and you got to have, you got to have, you know, both. But I think, I think mar without martial arts, that's my base without a doubt. You know, that was kind of a long winded, uh, I didn't even know what I was talking about. I <laughs> forgot. I lost count. I, I lost, I lost track no. of everything I was just talking about. Right now. I, I, I just started going like that. I think what you're talking about is your background um, and your 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 coach, uh, yeah, your oh um, from a physical fighting martial arts side, uh, molded you into a top um, coach who is teaching a lot a generation. It sounds uh, how to be tougher at a time. Yeah. When, when you got to be tough, we people need that you never hear Joe Rogan say. Well, that guy's terrible. He's too tough. You never want to be a tough guy, like a tough guy. Eh, fuck you. You know, you never want to be a tough guy, but you always have to be a tough person. You always do because life's tough, man. But it's okay to be really tough and say you're hurt. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's also really, um, uh, well, I guess I, I got a question for you. It, it brings me somewhere. I think, um, we had a situation where a, a fighter named Max something quit on the stool. Oh yeah, yeah. So, remember that? And, and uh, yeah. Kraus, James Kraus was his coach, um, and there was a lot of talk about how the coach getting the fighter back in there was wrong. Uh, Ariel yeah. Juan was outspoken on this. Chael Sonnen said, uh, "No, it's it's the other way." How did you see that, and how do you see toughness and just communicating um, that you know you can't? I don't know. That what do you say, Coach? It's a, it's a tough one. That's a tough one because um, I know that coach is uh, Mark Montoya. Actually, um, oh. um, I if my I'm I'm known even by John McCarthy. But, John McCarthy, when he does his pre uh, pre fight um, meetings, which he used to do, he's not refing anymore. But he used to always talk to the coach and say, "Be like John Hackleman. Don't make us do all the work." Because I I was known for throwing towels in, stopping fights in the corner. I never wanted my fighter to be hurt. Uh, to me, it's okay. Even my kids, you could cry all you want, just keep swinging. Even when they're sparring, you cry all you want, just keep swinging. Don't quit. Cause you can't quit in life, but you can cry, you know? Um, but I'm the first one to stop a fight. I'm going to save face for my fighter. So he doesn't have to, but 
there is a time, and I don't, I don't know that guy, so I'm not his coach. Um, I'll give you an example that was similar to that. I, uh, uh, I've stopped fights in the corner many times. I can still go. I know you're, you're done. So I'll go against. I've even had referees say, John, why are you I throw in a towel? And the referee say, why are you stopping the fight? You don't have to stop the fight. I go, yeah, I did. That's my fighter. The fight's done. You know, I've had doctors, ring doctors go, hey, John, the cut's not that bad. You don't have to stop it. I go, it's over. I just stopped it. I don't want him to fight anymore. The cut's bad enough. So I'll stop a fight if I have to. Um, and if my fighter is going to be hurt or, or, or something, I'm never going to, especially a brain stuff or uh, but I had a guy that wanted to quit, I was ultimate fighter, and I didn't know this guy. So I was coaching Ultimate Fighter season 11, and I didn't know the fighter, so he wasn't my guy. I didn't have a relationship with him. But he wanted to quit in the middle of the first and second round because his ankle hurt or his wrist. I think it was his wrist. It was like, I was like, no, bro, you got to get out there and fight. Oh, I can't coach my, my wrist. I go, bro. You're gonna when you're 60 years old. You're just gonna. You're the only thing you're gonna remember about your fighting career is you quit in the corner because of a wrist injury. Go out there fucking swinging, and you can have surgery on your wrist later. Right. And uh, so I, I, I go to. I'm trying to push him out because I wanted him. I didn't want him to quit for that because I didn't want that would mess with his mind. And and all the other coaches or ref, uh, uh, promoters and stuff. They don't, he'd be the guy that quit in the stool. Right. So I didn't want that. I'd rather him right. go out and maybe I could throw in the towel or something. But I don't like them quitting on, in the stool. You know, I'd rather them go out. And uh, anyway, Herb Dean came and stopped that fight anyway. And then that fight, um, oh, he just went, oh, the doctor said you can't make him go out. Yeah. That Max guy or whatever. Right. So I think, I think, uh, I think that guy, um, I don't, I don't know him well enough, and but I do know, I don't, I, I think that um, um, just by exhaustion, and that's why he wanted to quit. Right. So I, I think he would have been better suited to just go out swinging and let the referee stop it, or throw in the towel for the ref. But I, I can understand where the re the the um, the the trainer. Um, didn't want him to to quit on the stools just for him i mean it's like like i'm 60 years old right now i can look back at my career and i feel nothing but pride i didn't win any all of my fights you know but i yeah i know for a fact i never quit right so i i just would hate for my fighter to look back and, and think you know that's going to be a blemish not only his reputation i mean I, I think I think uh, Roberto Duran was probably one of the three best fighters of all times. Yes. But what's he most What's he most known for? No mas. Yeah. See, I mean, so I just that it would be for the fighter's benefit that I would make him go. Now, if I felt he was truly hurt, man, especially a brain something like right. he got hit or something, I'm not letting him go up back out. But this you, guy was just tired. He was just tired. You prioritize. Just suck it up. You just suck it up and you fucking start swinging, swing, you right. know, and, and, and so anyway, but I, I saw both sides, but I definitely, uh, I'm not saying I'm not going to go against, uh, um, just like I, I'm not going against uh, Herb Dean on that, you know, late stoppage that everybody's talking about in last week's fights. Did you guys see that one? I, I did. And I, I think that Herb Dean came out with a pretty uh, strong response, which is, I'm trained for it, and two, uh, that there's a ringside doctor, um, and uh, procedurally he was right, um, but I was watching that fight, and I could see where Dan Hardy was saying. Now, I think where Dan Hardy was wrong was yelling at him in the middle of a professional event, yeah. but that looked pretty brutal to me. Yeah, it didn't to me. It didn't, it didn't to me at all, because mm. I saw that one punch hit him, and you oh. can tell he went out for a sec, but when he hit the ground, watching it for like the third time from the right angle, okay. his hands were up here, and he was looking right, right. at his opponent. And right. he only got hit. He only got hit one more time. The other three were glancing off of him. You're right. So bro. he didn't. He wasn't taking a pounding, and his right. eyes, like 
like Dan Hardy said he was out and his, his arms were just up in a stiff way. They no. were they were up and his eyes if his if he was out, his eyes would just be straight up. But he was actually looking at his opponent. He was making so, eye contact for sure. So, and he yeah, was so, his two arms run, for sure. His sure. arms were, yes, I I agreed with uh uh with uh Herb on that. And I and I'm known for the early stopper. So I mean I stopped Frank Shamrock uh um Caesar Gracie's fight. I was the Did one that you? threw in the I threw in the towel. Oh, really? Yeah. You were so, you, you were cornering Shamrock in that fight? No. No. Oh. Caesar. Oh. Caesar Gracie. Oh, you Okay. Because yeah. he's from the Lions Den Shamrock, so I didn't think so. Oh, so yeah. you were to Caesar, you were oh wow, I didn't realize how legendary you were. <laughs> I never, I, never trained oh, him. Oh, I didn't know that. That goes back that takes you back a while. Wow. And I never even trained Caesar. He just called me one day, he's like, Hey, I'm fighting this weekend. Can you work my corner? I was like, Okay, uh I, I think you're a jujitsu guy. Why are you why are you fighting MMA? He goes, well, uh, you know, da, da, da. Like, why would you fight Frank Shamrock your first fight? Why don't you oh. like like get some, you know, some, you know, more? He's like, no, I just want to have one fight in my life, and I want to fight Shamrock. I go, okay, realize this, bro. Since you don't know MMA, you know, or not, not, not know it, but you're not an MMA guy. I don't want you. I love Caesar Gracie, so I said, you're such a good friend of mine. If you get hurt, I'm stopping it like that. He goes, okay, it's up to you. I just want you in my corner. So I walked into his corner with Jake Shields, and the second the second I saw him getting hit, the towel went in and bang. Good. So, but anyway, no. so, so I don't know, that's how I felt about that. So I got I got I got one more question for you, Coach. Um, I think it's the question. We can wrap up. You can tell people how they can find you. I think it's a question that everybody, you know, honestly, honestly wants to know. Um, how many left hooks are there really? I just came up with. Let me just show you. I just came up with five more yesterday. <laughs> I got this. No, listen. No, it's because I have this. Uh, this is actually a knife. Uh, it's a you know it's a practice knife. Karambit. It's a karambit. Yeah. Yeah. So I have my I, I I just came up with a karambit hook. Okay, you're gonna love that one. I came up with a blade hook. It's gonna be backwards though. Right. Okay, it's gonna surprise you. And then I came up with a tactical pen hook in case you're on a plane or something. Mm. Oh. All right. I also came up with a what time is it hook. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and then I got one more. Well, you, you look is that the Hail Mary? <laughs> no, it's like, but I'm gonna. It's gonna. It's gonna. Ba it's gonna be backwards because I'm gonna pretend I'm looking. I'm gonna. I'm gonna because I wear my watch on my left. But I'm gonna put it on my right. I'm gonna say mm -hmm. somebody say what time is? I'm gonna go what? Mm -hmm. Boom! Boom! <laughs> I like that. I, I like it. it. I, I got it. I got it. Or, or maybe, maybe don't change it, Coach. Maybe go ahead and look at the, the wrong wrist with the watch on. You put a bit more confusion on the other guy. I like <laughs> it. <laughs> like, yeah, like that. That's even better. I'm going to do that. You know, I really uh, – I get a lot of love, and I, 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 I thank God every day for uh, – I thank God every day for, uh, um, like, okay, just little things, like being on the cover of my favorite all-time magazine where I used to read when I was a kid. Right? So I, I mean, I thank God every day oh, for wow. that, you know. Wow. And then, uh, um, and I thank God for things like the Second Amendment, you know. There's right. me, there's me with a gun when I was like six or seven, or eight, maybe nine. I don't know. Or See? four, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's my dad and uh, some FBI agent in Hawaii. Wow. But anyway, so I thank God for a lot of stuff like that, you know. But uh, um, and then there's other things like I, I was in a corner, I was working at UFC. I don't even remember where we are. And the guy was like, uh, um, man, I'm gonna, one of the fighters was going out. You know, he, he was going to go out and fight. And he's like, he turned. He goes, hey, hey, hey coach, I'm going um, to make sure uh, that I work on my takedown defense for this fight because I don't want to be a partial artist. I want to be a martial artist. Because I came up with that, and I was talking about that on a, on a couple of my blogs and stuff. So I was like, oh, that's cool that he even saw my, you know, I didn't even know he would 
see that. So that was kind of cool. And then Hart, uh, oh, Hardy, Greg Hardy, um, he was walking out, and I was like standing somewhere backstage of a UFC. And while he was walking out to the cage, you know how they procession out? Yeah. Like, you know, it's all like really like structured. And he like stopped the whole procession and like looked at me. He goes, Hey, coach, I'm going to work on some left hooks for you, okay? You know, I was like, So I was like, I don't know. It's just like, I, I, I'm blessed. Whereas, um, you know, I get, uh, I just gotten, I gotten, uh, I've just been I've been able to deal with some great people and and you know martial arts has made it so that I can uh, you know I, I just don't have to be that little fucking bit oh can we cuss on this sure I don't care <laughs> so I mean I just thank God every day that I don't have to be that little fucking bitch with a floral dress and kissing everybody's ass and scared to make eye contact with anyone and without martial arts that would have been me. So I just thank God every day for martial arts and uh, and all the things it's given me. It's given me things like, you know, the friggin' tenacity to finish college. You know, I mean, who would have thought? You know, and then gave me the, you know, the 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 entrepreneurship to, you know, open my own gym and start an online. I have an online dojo as well. Um, so I just thank God for that. And the people that I see are just. Uh, you know, just the greatest people, martial artists are the greatest people in the world. And I feel so much comfortable when I'm, when I'm backstage at a UFC, I don't have to face the door. I can just relax. I'm with a bunch of other martial artists, you know, they got something called a super show every year, a uh, century martial arts. You know what that is? It's no. a company. It's like the biggest martial arts. Century, yeah. Well, no, century. Century. yeah I did. So I go to their super show every year. They have a huge convention. It's usually at the MGM, and I speak at it every year. And there's like you know a couple hundred people usually that do, but just hanging out with martial arts, I'm like, I'm always so relaxed because like nothing is ever gonna happen when you're with all these martial artists. And then when I go out in the real world, you know, it's like, oh, he's gonna attack me. Oh yeah, I gotta be ready. Gotta get my gun. I gotta get my knife. You know, I just always gotta worry because everybody they're not martial artists. You <laughs> so. Got I just always got to worry because martial artists yep. are the best people in the world. Yeah. You know? So because everybody's anyway. confident, everybody's yeah. confident and, and, and they're not afraid of other people. Yeah. They're, and the, there's no they, bullies. There's no, and we got to, and in case, you know, you never know. Right. <laughs> That's nice. I'm so not wearing this, but anyway, so um, somebody made this for me. So where, where can people where can people find you? How do they follow you? How do they learn the left hooks? If they want to see more of the pit master, where, where do they need to go? I think my favorite place in this, I mean, it should be like, I, 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 do, uh, uh, I do YouTube, the pit online dojo. But my favorite one is just Instagram, just so short and boom. You know, and then, and then on the Instagram, if you go to my bio, then you can go to my website. But uh, Instagram is just pit underscore master. Right. Pit underscore master Instagram. John, thank you so much for coming. Thanks, Thanks for sharing. Uh, we didn't get to talk as much about businesses as we usually do. Hope you can come back sometime. You know, We're talking I, about I business. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. You, do you, that. you know, the pit like that. So Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it because I'm, uh, I'm a big business You know, now. I was never before, but knowing that I had to turn it from a backyard gym to a business, you know, and now supporting people off of it, you know, it's like, everything changed you know so yeah we'll talk about that next time but awesome. thanks for John, having me guys adam paul stay thank safe you. out there if nothing else at least carry some uh pepper, pepper spray right <laughs> all right see you guys thank you all coach right. thank you all right bye, bye coach